Well, I mean, like, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Oh, she reviewed this property. Ching, ching, ching. <laughs> Who's paying? I lied. I'm like, this is foul. It was foul. We don't have a budget. Sounds exhausting. This Barbie doesn't do the money. Ken does the money. My friend and I used to do a podcast, and it <laughs> really? would start with just us. Just Rip. no context. It was called right Champagne and Complain. Oh, yeah, I, I do love that name. name. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, that's a good cool. name. Yeah, we, uh... Which do you enjoy more? The complaining or the champagneing? Both. Oh, at the 50, same 50, time, 50, that's makes you it for a real it. spicy episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had enough champagneing. If you had politicians oh. on, you could be like, and campaigning. <sighs> Champagne yeah. complaining and campaigning. <laughs> There's so much to complain about nowadays, no. you know? Well, we Not would enough do time in the day. book <laughs> reviews and we would kind of like, like I would do like a classic, like I would talk about Wuthering Heights. Like if you've read Wuthering Heights, you know it's absolutely straight up bananas yeah i don't know if we're do we swear on this podcast we don't you can if you want i was gonna say because live, live your life well no i don't swear on my channel but now i'm like in front of in this we bleep, yeah. we'll bleep it but you can swear i was gonna say i curse like a sailor in like in real, normal, life? real life and so now i have this kind of microphone in front of me and i'm like all bets are off <laughs> this is ruby uncensored yeah yeah unleashed unleashed it, a good title yeah well we have too. travel ruby on here with uncensored. us uncensored i don't know which camera to look at <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining <laughs> thank you for having me yeah you you run an awesome travel channel here in las vegas yes. where you go in different casinos and different restaurants and you review things yeah. and you also recently started a gambling channel we have a slot channel as well yeah, yeah that's yep. amazing tell it tell us what you do for anyone who doesn't know what you're doing yeah so so, okay, our main channel is Travel Ruby. It's run by myself and my husband, who is known as Mr. Ruby. Um, we started that channel in 2019, and we actually did start that channel with gambling, believe it or not. They're, one of our first ever videos is a gambling oh, video on there. Full circle, huh? Yeah, and so when we moved here a year ago, it made all the sense in the world to start a second separate channel so that we could do gambling every single day. Um, we didn't want to flood the travel channel with gambling content. Right. We didn't want those people to get alienated by so much gambling because we were doing it about once a month on well, Travel Ruby. Well, take us back because you started yeah, in 2019. Back. 2019. So and you released your first video and it went bonkers. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, Millions? So 1.4 million? It's at like 1.5 at this For point. For the like, first video Our uploaded? first video, which is crazy. How so does that happen? I don't know. Honestly, we, so we traveled to Las Vegas. We started coming here together in like 2017 ish. I'm the planner. Like if you're a part of a girls group, there's always one who's doing all the dinner reservations. They're finding all the places that you're taking Instagram photos. They're finding the cute bars, right? I'm that girl. That's me. You're a Yelp power user. Yes. And so, right, open table or whatever. The people, <laughs> no, I've never left a review I'm on a Yelp. Yelper. And I am going to stick to that. I've never left a review on Yelp. I am a silent observer. But um, we were traveling here pretty frequently and we would bring different groups of friends. And I'd understood the system with rewards cards at this point. So back then, in 2017, nobody was doing this content. Like nobody, there are two channels now that I know that I had looked up that are still doing content. That's it. Two guys were doing this. That's it. There were no ladies doing it. And so I wasn't finding where to get a cute little bevy. Like they weren't like, and come here and get this one with the umbrella. Like no one was doing that. They also weren't reviewing any pools at the hotels. And I was like, what did the pools look like? Because I'm from the Midwest. And when you go on vacation, you go to the pool. That's right. people from like the west coast and people from like down south they don't get that because like you probably have access to a pool but in the midwest it's cold so often that you don't so i planned all these trips out and we would come here and like work the system and get free stuff and get comps and all these things and my friend was like God, you should just be a travel agent for las vegas you're so good at this and i was like i would love to do that that'd be such a fun job and like we came home and my husband was like hey, I think it'd be kind of fun to make like a video. Like just, you have all these tips and things. And I was like, dude, there's no one on the internet doing this. Like there's no niche for Las Vegas. I was watching a lot of like Disney World content at the time. Ton of people doing it oh, over there. So you were like Telling you how to similar. do it. Because you have to like be like a planning wizard to do Disney World now. It's terrible. Like to actually have a good time, you really have to know what you're doing. It's true. It's nuts. And so I was like, no one's doing that for here. And there's so much to do. And like, how do you know what's good? So we made our first video and it's horrible. It's like me on a snowball night and I'm like, hey, travelers, today I'm going to be bringing you like I'm doing like a weird little voice. And you weren't even in the video. You were behind no, the camera. No, it's voiceover entirely because we had no footage. So we're just using like stock footage because we didn't have anything because we hadn't traveled there with the idea of we didn't have a camera, nothing. Wait, nothing. so that entire video was stock footage? I thought you recorded it on your phone. 
Wow. Oh. Mm-mm. You didn't even know. You didn't even. Oh, you started the vacation not even knowing. No, we we came back from one of our vacations and made the video like on the fly, and just edited it together, threw it together. Totally forgot about it. Like we got engaged. We're doing other stuff. I'm working my normal job. I have a culinary degree, so I was doing um, baking and patisserie. I worked in like where they did laminated dough. You know, like croissants. Like I would get up at like yeah. 4 a.m. to go do that because it's like a six hour process to make Dang. croissants. They're crazy. So right. appreciate your croissant next time you have and one. And then after 10,000 take... croissants, you went back to the YouTube channel. <laughs> well, so I was doing that every day. We noticed he's like, dude, this, this thing got like a lot of views. Like we could get monetized. We need to do a couple more videos again with like crummy stock footage. Those are privated now. Like they weren't our own footage. We're just like me again over voiceover. But he's like, hey, we could like make some money doing this. And I knew there were YouTubers. Like I knew like Jenna Marbles and like I knew there were famous YouTube people that do this for a living. I understood that as a concept. But did I think like I'm going to be YouTube famous? I'm going to ha- like have a career on YouTube? Absolutely I'm be not. Travel Ruby. Absolutely not. No, yeah. absolutely not. We made Travel Ruby up. It was just like, here's the name of the channel. Here's the video. What? Well, why Ruby? <laughs> So I had bright red hair. You can see in the beginning of the channel, I had bright red hair. I had it for years, actually. And so my husband just called me Ruby. Well, we were the real story is we were watching Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and the lady's name is the Jade Fox. And so I became like, I forget, the Ruby something. And uh, so it was like, I, that was my ninja name was Ruby something. And so Ruby became from that. And so my real name's just hard to spell and not easily pronounced if you read it. And so it just made sense. Like, Travel Ruby, but it took off. So I was like, I am now Ruby. Like this is now my alias. This is my persona now. And it's kind of great because if we meet subscribers and I hear Ruby, I know they're talking about me, but it's also nice not to hear your real name called a hundred times a day. And I also know they know me from the internet. Right. So you know how they don't know me in person. It's totally different to hear yeah. your alias. You At know? what point in, in the career did you guys understand that it, this could be a full-time thing? So it's funny because this was 2019, right? Like summer of 2019. We put out a couple more videos, then boom, COVID hit. Right. I got laid off. Our wedding had to get canceled and rescheduled. Horrible. Horrible dark times, right? For everybody, for the most part. But we looked at it as like, this is an opportunity my husband is already doing um, like internet marketing and search engine optimization and stuff so he can work from wherever. So we're like, we're going to take this opportunity. They reopened Vegas in June, I think. And I didn't get asked back to my job until August. So for three months, we just kept going back and filming. And right off the bat, when we were like, okay, we now got monetized and we can now try to make money off of this. We were like, this is going to be the one-stop shop Vegas uh, YouTube channel. Anything you want to see is going to be there. So we were like, okay, gambling. Absolutely. We're doing gambling. Buffets. We're doing buffets. Okay. We're going to do hotels. And I had this kind of concept for like a news video in my head. And when we first went in June, they enacted the mask mandate like midway through. There was like social distancing, all this horrible stuff that no one wants to hear anymore. But this was information that people needed to know if they were going to be coming. And so our first two videos that were super successful was... Uh, like June reopening update 2020 here's what to know if you're coming to Las Vegas and it was me doing a report again a voiceover which we now do every single month a voiceover video of me talking about what's different and then our first uh, ever gambling video was I put a hundred dollars in a slot at Bellagio in 2020 and And that took off and that took off those two videos were carrying us was the monthly news update and a gambling video every month we're carrying the channel for a while until my husband straight up learned, taught himself how to use a camera, which we had no idea how to do, and how to edit good videos. And then we started inching into doing hotel vlogs, which is what really exploded the channel was the hotel vlogs. Because we wanted it to be super all-encompassing. So we wanted it to show, here's dining, here's the pool, here's where you get a drink, here's what the casino floor looks like. Like everything you could want to know, and it was not going to be like a vlog. Um, I think a lot of YouTube is vlogs. It's people, and now I'm doing this, and now I'm doing this, and that's great. It's awesome. It's very personal, but we wanted it to be a little different. It was more, people have compared it to like Samantha Brown with like best hotels, best show ever, or like Rachel Ray, which is like, it's such an honor to be compared to those two things, but to have him pointing at me like I'm a reporter, and I'm like, so we're on the casino floor, and I noticed right away this and this. Now we're going to get a drink. Here's a cute place for you to get a cocktail. And it felt more like a show 
And then more people were doing this. So at that point, at 2020, when we started our channel, several other people had the same idea, like all at once, like in a vacuum, suddenly there's like a bunch of prominent Vegas channels popping up. I know you guys had like Norma on your podcast. Yeah. Like she came into the scene around the same time. A lot of people doing it. So we're like, okay, now we need to also be different. So we started doing these crazy intros as well, like wild stuff, like playing around. I mean, some of them are amazing. Some are kind of cringe. Like some of them are like the best thing we've ever done, but we were experimenting with that to make it pop, to make it be like, wow, these are different. This is interesting. They're doing it a little different. And it just exploded. Like the channel exploded. It looks interesting because like when I watch the videos, it looks like you're having fun. It looks like you're yeah. on vacation because technically you guys were going there for vacation. But right. how was that from actually the, the production side of it? Did it feel like a vacation? I'm so glad it looks like we're having fun. Um, I think <laughs> earlier the, the on, truth. the less polished ones were more vacation-y. When I have like the bright red hair, we hadn't quite gotten as serious once we started realizing how much money was in this and also how much more of our perfectionism started to take over on both ends that's when it started to be like oh we're just gonna enjoy some time at the pool and i'm there for literally 45 minutes and we're shooting it and we're leaving to go do the next part right and it got to the point where we would come let's say 10 days we would stay at a different hotel almost every single night we would maybe have like a two-night break where we're staying Jeez. at one place for two we had all our stuff packed and I never unpacked it. Like I would pull out my outfit for that day and like my bag of toiletries and we would put it all back because we're moving Because you're just moving each time. Moving, yeah. moving. That and sounds we exhausting. Get up at six, yeah. finish the one hotel, move to the next. Somewhere in there we're doing a buffet. I had an itinerary on my iPad and it would be like to the hour. Like Dude, on this hour we're back. doing this. He has to get the B-roll here. Now we're going and shooting a buffet at this hotel. We had no car. So we were like trying to figure out the closest places. We would walk to most places as well. And so it was like us just working like a 16, 17 hour day for 10 days straight and then come home and he would just upload all of it. And I would just try to like get my voice back and like come back to life. Where did most of the money come from? Was it just ad revenue? Ad revenue. Yeah, we do. We don't do sponsorship stuff. Um, I've never been paid by a hotel to do a review ever. Never been paid by a restaurant. Have you been offered to? No. And that's, I don't want to be either. Sure. I, it, I am happy to receive free food. Yep. Like, hey, come eat our food. Uh, I'm happy to receive a free night. We're going to put you up in the room. But when they do that, there's also no stipulation that I'm going to be positive or give any sort of honest or anything other than my honest review. Like you're giving me a room key and I'm going to do my thing. And that's it. Right. Like I say what I say. So there's total freedom in that. If I was getting paid, I think it would really change the dynamic of like giving a hotel review. I don't think I would feel. Yeah, that makes sense. Great well, about can it. you share the CPM of what the. Yeah. Are we. At it? It's like a uh, 14. 14. That's yeah, really good. Yeah. 14. I want to say is the that's CPM really on the good. travel video. Yeah. So what was your guys is like at, at the peak, I, I suppose. How, what was like the monthly ad revenue? Can you share that? I can share it with you, not on the podcast. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's changed. Give us a range? Very dramatically. Okay. For the better or for the worse? <sighs> for the better. I will say this. Okay. We, by the time the channel started taking off, I got my job back. As soon, right away, I got my job back within like five or six months. And I'd already dropped on a part-time because we wanted to focus on this. We were like, we can make a run the writing was on the wall. So I yeah. right away was doing part-time. And within a year... It was no longer worth it for me to keep my job because we were making more doing the YouTube videos. And when we moved here, my husband stopped doing his job and we now just do these two channels. How so, long did it take for that channel to reach uh, six figures a year? Not, not sure. sure. Okay. I'm really not sure, actually. Okay. okay. I don't know. I'd have to look back. I'm. Well, you also have to understand I'm not the money um Sure. Um, this Barbie doesn't do the money. Um, <laughs> Ken does the money. Like sure. I, I don't touch the money. Like okay. I just knew that I could pay all my bills. Sure. Like that was all I cared about. And we also, one thing to also understand is that we live like insanely under our means Yeah. because we're stacking as much money as possible to build a house, like to, or buy a house, build a house. We don't know. But well, that's interesting. So you guys moved from the Midwest to Vegas. And yes. what was the reason for that? So... We, like I said, you saw our schedule, like it was bonkers. Like we had no time. We would get invited to 
like PR events that we couldn't go to and we would get asked by other channels to do collabs and we're like, we don't have time. I'm sorry. All we care about is grinding out our videos. Like we just had no time. It was the Palms reopening that something happened with flights and it was a huge nightmare and it was a big headache and we're at the party meeting people and I was like, we just have to move here. This is so dumb. Like, what are we doing? Like, we need to move. And it was me kind of holding us back because like our whole lives are there. We grew up there. Like, but it was like, this is like, such an opportunity and even we came here one thing i will say is we came here we started the uh gambling channel and like doubled our revenue overnight wow just what, by having a gambling channel on the side was it pretty hard leaving behind your friends and family to move here yeah absolutely i mean i saw my sister every single week and i saw my best friend every single week and so leaving them behind was extremely tough um it was tougher than i think i thought it was going to be actually because we got here and we were so busy and we're meeting all these new people and we're constantly socializing and it's amazing. Like it's this cool opportunity. We have this new house and we love it and we decorated it and all these things. But it's still in the back of your head. It's still this kind of like huge change. And right. I think you have to process that. I think anybody who's trying to move to a different state knows how hard that is. Like it's hard. Yeah. It's a it's a hard thing to do. How did you guys get permission to like film the locations that you guys filmed? Do you reach out to someone from the hotels? <laughs> Initially, we didn't get permission like ever filmed. Filmed yeah. and so uh, for anything i mean we just did it and i i actually don't know how we did that now i do think now that the channel's bigger that would be way harder to do um we also there also were less people trying to do it now the vegas niche has exploded so there's more people walking around trying to film stuff and there wasn't at the time and i also don't think they really knew their policies yet influencing in general in nevada has just exploded even in the slot niche it's exploded and how are the hotels um dealing with it are they welcoming it or it depends now so now with our channel and since we've moved here pretty much every every brand has invited us or happy to have us at this point we're now at the point where they're like yes please yeah, come and do like, it we, we will usually now send an email and be like can we please have permission to film at the hotel because right. We also try to get shots that, like, you really aren't supposed to get, like, of the pit with the tables and stuff. Like, you can't get those shots. So, like, now to make a better video, I reach out and I'm like, hi, we'd like to come do a hotel review. And they're always like, please do. Right. Yes. Do the casinos ever fight with one another over, like, oh, she reviewed this property? The and are they competitive with each other? They're – so, I – none of the properties, like – they don't love each other i'll okay. say that they they all it's it's very competitive and i think that's also just you have to understand if you're like a ceo of a casino of like a hotel casino you're kind of you have to be kind of like that girl like you're kind of you're kind of one of those like cutthroat people right so meeting ceos and think i think if you've never interacted with like a hotel ceo or like you don't realize how like intense they can be. And so mm. you'll mention another property. Oh yeah, but they suck. They don't have this and they're, they don't have that. And they, they're, they're, they're savages like, to on. each other. And you kind of have to be like, oh, but we love them. We love you and we love them. Like it's, it's such a tightrope walk doing this now because one thing that's really hard when you're doing reviews is maintaining an integrity while still being tactful and like honest but polite. That, yes. And so I'm walking on this little tightrope where on one hand I have my subscribers who I built by being honest and like telling them my feelings about my pro the properties, food, everything. On the other hand, I have these hotels who are welcoming to us, which is huge because if they just decide one day they don't want to deal with this crap anymore, they could shut us all out and I'm out of the job. Right. And so you have to walk that fine line of being honest. But I even had one who was like, you're totally right. The carpet is too dark. Thank you for saying that. Like they like were like, okay, we appreciate that you like said something that was only slightly a roast. Do you know what I mean? Like right, right. I, I wouldn't rip them to shreds unless it was like abysmal. And have I mean, you ever my, had to? Yes, absolutely. Some of my, I, well, my video that you guys have to watch after this that is so funny is the worst hotel in Las Vegas. We stayed at the Oyo. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> you don't want to. It's, okay. It used to be Hooters. Okay. Do you know Hooters? On Trap? Yes. Yes. It's now the Oyo. Okay. Um, someone said it stands for On Your Own. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but what I will tell you is I have never, it was so bad, it was hysterical. I mean, like, I've never experienced anything like that in my what life. What was wrong with it? Everything. Um, we got stuck in an elevator, got to our room. Everything in there was destroyed. Like, if you can imagine, like, a frat house... Like the closet was broken. The uh, curtain was like stapled back together with like literal staples. 
um our our lamp was like it like was like so janky and then you would go underneath and it had like plugs just like in an extension cord and it was all gross looking and then we went into the bathroom the um sink was clogged i went to go take a shower and twisted the knob and the knob just fell off in the shower (laughs) like you can't even make this up it was content gold we're smiling from ear to ear because we're like people are gonna lose their minds we went to the pool and there was like a dirty magazine cover floating in the pool and some caution tape and you can see me talking i'm like we're at the pool and you can just see caution tape like drifting like a plastic bag floating in the wind behind me it's like very american beauty yeah Yeah. no it was like i'm like this is foul it was foul it was wretched and hilarious a fire alarm went off while we were in there wow but they do dollar blackjack and like cheap beers and what's the nightly rate um, seventy dollars. They pay you seventy dollars a night. They should. Um, but you can go to the Luxor for that price, and it's a completely adequate place to stay. What's the <laughs> coolest or best experience have you ever had? <sighs> like in a ho- like my favorite hotel. Yeah. It, it's hard to say if I have a favorite. I do love the Bellagio, but I will say that's not the most swanky hotel. It's okay. not because it's old. It's been here a while. They've renovated the rooms. They're very nice. But I mean, if you stay at like Wynn. Cosmo, Palazzo, like their rooms, like crap on the Bellagio. But I love the Bellagio Fountain. I love the conservatory. I like how busy it is. The restaurants are all fabulous. So that's like my favorite hotel. But in terms of like stay, I mean, oh, I mean, there's some underrated spots as well. Like the English Hotel in the Arts District. That was one of our favorite stays because there's no casino there. It's just like extremely relaxing. Like we stayed there and I was like, gosh, I feel like it was after a busy trip and we were so overwhelmed and it was amazing. It was so relaxing. I love the palms. There's a lot more that I love than not love. I'll yeah. say like there's only on my channel. There's only maybe a handful of like very negative reviews. Those ones always do the best yeah. for the record. I can imagine. It's so easy to be negative and you will go viral. But I just don't think that's the way to do it. It's not sustainable for sure. No, it's not. It's really not. This is a PR game. Vegas is a who you know kind of town. And so... It's a balancing act. I have to tell people when I don't like something. At this point, hotels are always like a a great thing for us to do. The news updates, people love those. Now it's not, it's like just me telling you like, here's what's coming, here's what's opening, here's rumors, here's things we're hearing about. Those are consistent for us every single month. Buffets have really come up on the channel. Oh, come up. I would have thought the other way. uh -uh, Uh-uh. One of my favorite buffets that, like, unfortunately closed down was the M Buffet. Yeah. That was so good. Now they do that $100 one at Anthony's. Have you seen that? No. There's a $100 buffet at Anthony's now, and it's got, like, a six-month waiting list. It's crazy. Where is that at? It's inside the restaurant in the M Resort. Okay. It's called Anthony's, and... um. It's a hundred dollars. They have lamb, lobster tail, Jeez. like it's super high end, but they also limit how many people are in there. So it kind of just feels like a sit down, all you can eat. It's really nice. It's what, nice. What's your favorite uh, value play for restaurants? Like a value restaurant or a value or buffet? Steakhouse. <laughs> Anything. Steakhouse. Oh, God, we just we good. just talked about it right before the pod. There's uh, well, Ed, we were talking about Edge at Westgate because it's got there. I think it was like a seventy dollar okay uh, course where you get like a side and the steak and their steaks are excellent is that yeah. that's in my top 10 steakhouses edge yeah edge okay. is in my top 10 steakhouses the video itself yeah um, and buffets you said um the best value buffet is south point for south sure point. okay they have that 24 dollar like brunch where it's like all you can drink mimosas and they are strong and they keep them coming and the food's <laughs> always consistent it's cheap and it's consistent so like if you're just trying to get full south point like they have you and it's always busy Palms would be another good one. It's like slightly more expensive. Excellent buffet. What about best value hotel room? Uh, let's see. Well, if you refer to my five best hotels for your money, no, it's I, you, you're literally doing my Instagram like DMs. And it's like, <laughs> hey, and I'm like, please watch this video. Yeah, no, please I know. That must get so annoying. <laughs> I, I just like kind of reference. Messages every please day. watch this video. Here's this video. Um, I think there's I in the the best budget hotels or hotels for your budget. I think we listed New York, New York's a good starter hotel. Planet Hollywood is a great starter hotel. It's like right in the center of the strip and it's got cheap food. Park MGM, non-smoking, super solid. Um, Resorts Worlds, like Hilton, is actually very affordable. Yeah. And it's really nice. Like really nice. I love their pool. Location is further north, obviously, so you have to accommodate for that. If you're looking for like the cheapest, for me, it's Luxor. That is a hot take. A lot of people hate the Luxor, and they love to hate on the Luxor. Right. What? Why? Just too themed out? 
they've renovated recently and got a lot of new furniture in so i wonder if it was like crummier before i'd come and stayed but i mean i've been there three times i will say if you don't have a budget and you're a baller i think one of the coolest rooms i've ever been to was the nobu oh, sweet done the nobu at the yet. caesars that was insane yeah i don't remember what the nightly rates were but i think they were like 20 or 30 grand a night or something ridiculous oh my god yeah, oh, which, yeah i think the elvis suite is similar to that yeah which we didn't oh, pay up at the Westgate. But, yeah i i have I did the most expensive uh, hotel room in Vegas at the Palms? Is that the where, the, where is um, the most? Expensive? That's right. The the Damien Hirsch, the suite? hospital, like cost? like the doctor. It's, so crazy. he plays in his art centers around life and death. Okay. And so the death side, there's like hospital equipment and that's stuff. That's right. Some of the art pieces in there, I think they said are worth like a couple million dollars. Like, so they like won't just rent it out to anyone. But it's $100,000 a night, right? Yeah, I think so. Something like and that. And it's because that there's millions of dollars of artwork yes, in there? Yes, inside oh, I hadn't it. heard of that. Um, wow. it, there's like um, this wow. wall that has a bunch of different like diamonds or like gemstones on it. Then there's another one that's like all these different pills that he's placed. I've seen there's that. butterflies everywhere and there's like taxidermied butterflies and that's like the life side. And fish oh. like sharks he does and everything. The, he's you gotta known compare for the, the Oreo um, and that in one video. <laughs> he's Be known like, for like cutting an, a shark in half and like submerging them in that's right. liquid or whatever. That's another one of his. So like it, unless you know the artist it makes absolutely no sense. Like it's he does the dots as well. So in the palms they have that shark bar where there's that like desiccated shark in the center in the water and then there's the dots and you wouldn't think those two go together but that's his artwork so it makes sense when the Fertitta brothers owned it they were huge fans of his work so they bought a bunch of his stuff they sold the palms left some of it but took some of their favorite stuff with them that's amazing so, H- have you been to the secret mansion at MGM no I haven't done that yet yeah Mm-mm. that makes three of us I think I mean, Jeez. Us, yeah. if, if we all pull our resources now, just, together I've, I've, I've been there once biggest. actually true story yeah. I've, I've been there with uh, my former boss who used to work with at a company and Copperfield and oh. all three of us were just sitting I forget what we were talking about some kind of thing shooting for David's show or something and then in the pool area we saw David David Guetta and, oh no way yeah with his like uh, nanny entourage? or something yeah his entourage <laughs> I don't know his nanny. <laughs> yeah. They're, and, they're very and different things, but yeah. Copperfield's like. <laughs> his caretaker, his carer. Dude, Copperfield's like, I, I know, like, we can make a lot of money at our show, but you guys have no idea how much good DJs can make. And, oh, like, gosh. Was, and these mega clubs. Yeah, this know, is insane. Did Copperfield even know who David Guetta was? Oh, he, he yeah, he knew. Okay, but he like, was just mind blown when, like, I think someone told him, like, how much those DJs are, are, are One of the DJs are like, you make how much as a magician? Like, a, like dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's like, crazy. Seriously. Well, I think that's, it's. Well, it's kind of like us, too. Like, people think our jobs are made up. My grandparents... Oh, YouTuber? Yeah. At one point, my grandparents were like, so it's a show. And I was like, yeah, it's a show. So when does the show end? And I was like, it's not like seasons. Like, I decide when it ends. I just keep doing. And finally, my grandma's just sitting there. Who's paying you? (laughs) Yeah, and they watch and they're like, like, you're just just spending money. Google's paying me. The commercials are paying me. What's the internet? And then like (laughs) someone was asking, um, like a subscriber was like, I didn't like the ads that you had on your video. And I was like, I don't pick those. Yeah. Those aren't. I don't pick those. Like, I only get to pick where they are, yeah, not what they if are. If it's a candidate you didn't like, I'm sorry. They just <laughs> outbid the other one for my ad space. Like, sure. I can't help you there, you know? But people don't know. I yeah. mean, they don't know any of that. They don't know how you're getting paid. And if they skip, like, someone's like, if I skip to the ad, do you not get paid? I'm like, no, I still do, just less. If you watch it all the way through, I get paid more. But, like, that's stuff that, like, it wouldn't occur to most people. And I think they think I'm getting paid by the hotels because they don't realize how much the ad revenue is from right the advertising what are some of your favorite free things to do in vegas oh gosh there's a ton of the best free thing to do is to during the day walk through the hotels because they look like no other hotels in the world i mean they're so cool like walking through the wind in the lobby it's like this is gorgeous like just walk through that's that's a blast but i mean you have like the flamingos over the flamingo i mean right now with f1 it makes it a lot more difficult to do all the free stuff the volcano the uh, fountain show you have you seen the crusty like caesar's animatronic show no oh my gosh you haven't so if you go into the um forum shops outside of the cheesecake factory specifically they have that like aquarium and every hour they pull up these like disney style animatronics and they're like we're fighting for atlantis and like the lady (laughs) can like shoot water and the guy shoots fire and like they really need to fix the audio so you can barely (laughs) understand them it's a it's a it's a total vibe okay people are standing there kind of drunk and they're like what's going on <laughs> like Chuck E. Cheese it's like, a, what is but going worse because like yeah. you truly don't know what they're talking about and then like at one point it's kind of like 
quickly thrown together and so then this like demon beast bat thing comes out at the end and just goes <laughs> and then like it cuts out and someone goes, goes did we all die or what <laughs> like what was that it's amazing it's great I so, lied I do remember watching those shows when I was like nine yep, years old when I it's came it's worse and now I don't it hasn't think changed. They changed it no it has not changed they're so using it's, the same sound system yep, the same everything from like 1998 you have to watch it it's, it's excellent so it's like there's st- <laughs> like really dumb stuff like that but even just walking the strip at night is fun. There's so there are so many people you can people watch. There is so much that you can do for cheap here. I think it's just about balancing because you can like ball out and spend a ton of money and have a blast. And then you can also have like a really cheap time. So balance those two things together. Like don't spend any money during the day. Just kind of like mess around, look at hotels, go swimming, whatever. At night, do like a super nice meal. Go to one of the nightclubs and pay for fifty dollar drinks. Which right. do you think eat. we have the best people watching in the world? Some of it, for sure. Absolutely. I think so. I mean, when we do live streams, they go crazy because people just want to see what's going on. <laughs> just see people walking yeah, around. Yeah, they want to see people walking around and all the crazies. Like, absolutely. Fremont Street, uh, uh, it's like the human condition. Like, you can just study all <laughs> walks of life down on Fremont. Seriously. Yeah. I love Fremont, though. It's a total vibe. I actually like it more now living here than I used to. Yeah. From an anthrop. Or, never mind. Anthropological. Yeah, I was going to say, I was gonna say from an anthropological <laughs> point of view. When they look back in history. <laughs> no, it, it truly, it's it, it's all walks. It is all walks of life here in Vegas, and I kind of love it for that. What are some of your favorite gambling spots? Oh, gosh. We, now that we do the slot channel and we upload every day, we do a lot more off strip. Um, Aliante is great like, to us lately. Like, really great. We've been killing it at Aliante. Rampart, we call The Office. Rampart is really close to us. If you guys have never been there, it's an older demographic. Um, but their slot program is actually excellent. Like, whoever's, like, picking and selecting the slots. At like, Aliante. Yeah, or at um, Rampart. Rampart, okay. They're doing an amazing job. Um, that's where we met Daniel, like, the first time. Vegas Low Roller was at Rampart because he goes there all the time because they get new games and the, the play's good, the payback's good. Like, Can you explain the economics of, of slot channels? How does this work? Like, how are you not losing crazy amounts of money every day? Yeah, so we were really lucky because we kind of did this the right way. We were doing, okay, what's, what sucks a little is that these slots on Travel Ruby, when we started doing it, there were not a lot of slot channels. Some of those have like 600,000 like views on them. Like they, YouTube pushed those out to the stratosphere. Like they were going like crazy. So in starting a new channel, we sacrificed the algorithm kind of because the algorithm was like, oh yeah, everybody loves these and was pushing them out like crazy. Yes. But we didn't want to alienate the Travel Ruby viewership. So we started the new channel. But we had built an audience. We are we told a lot of our subscribers like, hey, if you guys liked the slot videos on Travel Ruby, we're doing them over here. Or if you just like hanging out with us because some people are just loyal to you. They like you. They want to watch what you put out. So we, we got monetized right away. So immediately the videos are making money. The next step was we're going to track each month how much we lose and compare it to the earnings on the channel. You've got a spreadsheet? I was just, I, I mean, like shoddily putting this in my phone. Like we're down this much. We're up this much. We're down this much. Gambling is very strange. It's you're not going to win. Um, and you can hit a really, really dark, dry spell where you're losing a lot and it feels hopeless. But for the most part, if you gamble as frequently as I do, you, or at, like what we do every day, you're basically going to just only lose a little bit because you suddenly, boom, you hit a big hand pay. Okay, well, I was down 3000 I just hit a hand pay for four. Now I'm up 1000 Right. Now I'm going to go lose that in two days. What's the daily budget? We don't have a budget. Um, we... Dollar. No, we, well, we, we don't know how it's going to go each session. We have found for us, um, and this is advice I try to give to my channel too, if you're having a bad day, it's going to be a bad day. You got to just stop. If you've lost on like five slots that you played, just stop. Just stop for the day. You got to try again the next day. Your luck will be entirely different. Do you play a couple minutes at a time, like five minutes on one machine, five minutes on another? No, or do you stick it depends. With one? We try to play a machine as long as possible um and that can bite you in the butt sometimes because like if it's cold it's cold and you got to know when to fold them but we just shoot for our videos to be around like the 20 minute mark um 25 minutes sometimes that's all on one machine if we hit bonuses it's longer sometimes it's two or three machines we really switch it up i mean we don't have a set thing we do have 
one like series on our slot channel, which is twenty dollar Tuesday. So I put twenty dollars into ten separate slots, okay. and we do low bets, like low rolling. What's and your average bet? Otherwise? Our average is maybe like a five dollar mark bet, like between like three and five. We but we'll do high. We'll do seven fifty, ten, twelve. $25 bets. I mean, we'll go way wow. up, but it's more in that middle range. A lot of people are watching our channel because the bets are a little more realistic for them. So right. they're seeing a $3 bonus. Well, that's okay. So true story. I actually went with Dylan. We, we tried this. We're like, let's just see how, how long a hundred dollars is going to last us. And I went from a hundred dollars down to like 20 in, I want to say five minutes, just making $3 bets. Mm -hmm. And I went on this crazy lucky streak where that hundred dollars went with down to twenty dollars, and over the course of the next thirty minutes, went to like five hundred dollars. Yeah. Then back down to two hundred dollars. I yep. walked away with two hundred dollars, and I'm like, cool, I'll take so it. So you but played the same hundred for thirty minutes. Yes. That is completely lucky. Is that it? is so lucky. Yeah. See, that's what I thought. Compared to so my story, which was a hundred bucks in and just a complete slide that's to zero, very and then I was lucky like, oh, I got twenty minutes. Yeah, ideal. That's ideal. Okay. Like if you are a slot channel and you're like, oh my God, we played a hundred dollars for that entire video. Amazing. Cash money. Yeah. Like that's excellent. We, when, when I, by the way, whenever I walk by somebody playing that machine, I'm like, that one's lucky. Good luck, bro. You yeah. Know? That's yeah. awesome. It was I always that think, day. I always think about, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just did some slot content before we came here. Cause I always try to like, we, we kind of try. So you go every day? No. Okay. No, absolutely not. How do you guys I, break it up? I wish I could say there was a better schedule than there is, but we're still trying to figure out how to balance two channels because yeah. Travel Ruby is really based on like when we're going to do that. And then the slot plays kind of like we're running low on content. We got to go. Sometimes we'll be like 14 days out and we're doing amazing and we can focus on the other channel. Other days it's like, we really need to go. Um, we knew we were coming here, so I knew I was going to wash my hair. So that was enough for me to be like, we're going to go do slot play <laughs> today. Yeah, I really base it around that. And I also need my days where I do not leave my house or speak. So I try to have at least one of those days oh. a week, if possible. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to do. I want to disassociate. Oh, um, that is the only not, way. Are you an introvert? No. Oh, you're. An um, extrovert. I'm one of those. I don't. They call it like ambervert. Like oh. I'm super outgoing when I'm with people. I love talking to people. I'm not shy, but I will get my social battery out, and that's it. Do not talk to me. Like I need hmm. to just be hidden in my little. Yeah. Cavern. So you recharge introvertedly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and then boom, I'm ready to go out there and face the world. I think yeah. I have more outro, like outward qualities than introverted, but I need that day. Um, we went to Venetian today. Um, there was one slot. I mean, we had we fed hundreds into it. It would not. What was your was worst one, day? One that, that How much have you guys lost in one day? Oh, uh, I don't even know. I, I can't tell. Like you. a, a couple hundred dollars? A thousand no, dollars? No, God, no. Thousands. Thousands. Thousands, yeah. Easily. Thousands. Yeah, yeah. I would say... I, I would easily say we've looked at each other and been like, I think we're down like two grand today. Like but the that's, law of large averages, she's playing all the time. It's it's, and then you will be like in despair. And I'm not joking. We were sitting there waiting for my parents uh, at Resorts World in the High Limit Room, and we're playing the ten times pays machines. Those old three reels. That's what you need to pay if you actually want to make money. Um, Ten wait, times, wait, wait, ten go, times, go ten back. times. What did you just say? The old, old crusty three reels. Okay. So those ones that look real boring, where it's three reels across. Like the classic, and they're not even digital. Like and you the, just go, ding, The ding, analog ding. ones. Yes. There's no bonuses. Oh. There's no features. It doesn't do anything fancy. You're saying those are the best That's machines? going to pay you. Yeah. Their odds are way better. Really? So that's the, why they're always in the high in limit the rooms. There's a reason those old crusty things are in the high limit rooms. Oh, the high really? limit players want to play those. I didn't even notice that. they pay. Yeah. Top dollar pinball, amazing games to play. Top dollar is so solid, but we were doing 10 times pays. We were doing um, $10 bets, $10 bets. We had 50 bucks in it because we were just waiting for my parents. Uh, did four spins, fifth spin. We won 10 grand. Wow. Boom, 10 grand like that. And so it was like we were down that month and we're like, not down anymore. That's amazing. We were at Santa Fe Station with Daniel and uh, stopped filming because we were just uh, all kinds of reasons. You just stop filming, but you're still playing, which is horrible and you shouldn't do it, but we do. And boom, we hit the grand. 13,000. Wow. And so you're down. You have to remember when you're doing this consistently, like we do, like it will eventually come back, but you can hit a spell. Like you can like for like three months, like you're not. Dan waiting. said he's had a spell for like eight months yes. or something ridiculous. You, that can like happen. a year. That can happen. That's yeah. insane. You have to, if you're having a real bad go, it's, you got to hope that you have content stored up and you can take a little break. Well, he also said that the audience actually wants to see you win as well. Like if you just keep posting losses, they get bored, they get bored they like which it. is 
Like, how are you supposed to you help that? You can't control that? it. No, they don't like it. I so know. So what are you supposed Your to do? Your energy is also lower. You can't help it. You're going to be a little bit down when you're losing. Right. And they don't want to hear you complain. You can't be like, oh, and like get mad. No one wants to watch that. Right. So you're trying to keep it entertaining and trying to be upbeat while losing. But I think that's where <laughs> this $20 Tuesday to concept comes into play. If you do like challenges and things. You can still make it engaging content while losing because with twenty dollar Tuesday we lose a lot more than we win because you're only putting twenty dollars in the machine. You have way less spins. Your odds are lower. How do you make that last for twenty minutes? Because it's twenty dollars in ten separate slots, and you're doing like eighty cent bets. So you're doing the lowest bet you can do on the machine. And a lot of people really engage with this because they're like, one, I get to see a bunch of different machines. I love that. It's relatable. Two. Um, you're doing relatable spins. I can actually see what I can win. And we've had big wins doing low spins. We've not had a hand pay yet, but we walked past one of our subscribers that did hit $1,200 on a 75 cent bet. It can be done. Are the odds, do the odds change depending on the size of your bet? The odds change on the denomination. So give me an example. So um, they release this every year. They tell you like what denomination on slot machines paid out the most. So there's a one cent denomination. That's like the lowest, you know, and you can do your bets within there. Two cent denomination, five cent, 10 cent, 25, a dollar, two dollars. And then the higher up denomination, the higher the bets are. So like 10 cent denom, the minimum may be five dollars. It might be seven dollars, but your odds are better depending on the denomination. So Got the it. higher denominations equals the higher the odds of theoretically success. the higher odds of success. Wow. Last year they said twenty five cent denom paid the best is what they said last year. Hmm. So they but do like random. statistics at the they end of the year. They do statistics, but it's still you're playing a random game and you are going to lose. And so with a slot channel, it's just this is lost. We look at it the same as Travel Ruby. This is how much it's spent for us to do this video because we were spending thousands of dollars of our own money on Travel Ruby to grow it. We didn't have any hotels giving us free stuff. We didn't have anyone working with us. I was really good at getting free rooms. And during 2020, you could get some really good deals on your rooms. We were barely paying for a room. But we still spent all our money on food and uh, travel and the flights and it was all investing. We were investing in ourselves. I mean, anybody who has like a YouTube channel, if you give anybody advice, it's invest in yourself, right? right? Like invest in your brand. So we look at the slots as the same way. It's just an investment into the channel. There are videos where we lost so poorly, like, okay, we're not making money on this video, this video, but there's six other videos we're doing this week. And so as long as we win on something, hopefully it'll balance out. I mean, in the ideal world, you won on the slot. And and, and get, you yeah. get the ad it, revenue. It, but well, you're getting like dividend payments essentially from your YouTube ad. So it's like that's up there making money continually. Yeah, I know. You're only like down once. And I know some channels, people started their channel to just sustain their gambling because they wanted to gamble. Right. Like, it's so interesting because I feel like after so many losses, just it's so hard to emotionally because that would affect me. Like every day if I gambled and if most of my days are losses, even though I knew if on the back end my ad revenue was higher than my losses, I don't know if my emotional level would reflect that. It's really hard. So that's something that we are still working on is in maintaining like an emotional regulation while doing something that's incredibly like emo it's designed to make you feel to depressed. make you feel a certain way. Yeah. They are designed to get you to get sucked in. I, we are fortunate. I'm really not a gambler in the sense of a gambler. So, like, you got my husband and Daniel who they love to right. feed that machine. But you see like, yourself as an entertainer. First. I see myself as, like, the entertainer, and I'm also kind of the back voice to be like, okay, but you know what? We got this content from it, and we did this many, like, this was good. Like, this part was good. Let's just start over. Let's make another video. We're fine. You know what I mean? I'm a little bit more able to, like, keep my brain away from it. But again, I'm also not the money Barbie, remember? So like, right. I'm not looking at our money the same way that right. my, my husband is. So Ken's the one looking at the bank account. So I think he sees the money is more real money than I do. Because the machines try to trick you to think you're not using real money too. Right. If yeah, it's everything is digital. Everything your is. Your brain, you can start to not register it as money. I start to try to not register it as money. And I think that really helps me to like, this is just content. I am literally just trying to make content. I'm trying yes. to make something entertaining. We really like to try to show what the slot does, how it operates, and if we think it has potential. That's something that 
I don't think a lot of slot channels necessarily do is be like, I think this game has potential. You should play it. Or I don't think you should play this one because they can really vary. Like there are machines that are not worth your time. They do not have good paybacks. And there's ones that are excellent and they were designed really well. How do you figure that out? Just by playing? By playing. Or, okay. And so a lot of people watch our channel and they're like, you have showed me which ones I want to go and try yes. and which ones I want to skip. Right. So people will watch us review the slot first sometimes before they go play. Are there tangible benefits when you guys like sign up to some of the reward systems or how does that you work? You should absolutely be signing up for the rewards. What so, do you guys get? So even before when I did Travel Ruby, now they're not as good as they used to be, I will say that. But when we were doing Travel Ruby and we were very seldomly gambling, the rewards were paying for our rooms to come here. Um, we would get free play, we would get dining, enough to like help sustain and grow that channel. And now, I mean, God, we're we're not even the highest tier at any specific place because we're not brand loyal to one property. So we're not brand loyal to stations or just Boyd or just whatever, we play at so many. But we're upper tiers on everywhere. We have like free parking pretty much everywhere. Um, you get free play everywhere. If you want to eat anywhere, pretty much they will comp you dinner. There's that. You're gonna get comp dinner. How do you get comp that? Do you flash the card or you do go you up ask? to the you go up to the rewards desk and, and they, you just ask like well they look dinner? at your player history and they're like yeah you play. What's the threshold for the the comp? Depends on the place. So it depends on the rewards program. So what's interesting is you have to kind of they're all starting to streamline a little more, but the offshore properties are gonna be better to you because they're lo they're local. So they want to they want to treat the locals. Um, some of the best I would say for locals in terms of comps, Circa is amazing. Club One, which is Circa, the D, and Golden Gate, they comp the heck out of you. We have so much free food and stuff every time we go there. It's kind of weird. Like wow. we're like, wow, okay, like this is really good. Um, resorts will always been pretty good for us. We have stations. We're really high in the stations casinos, so we have a lot of comps there. So it just. It's where you're loyal to. It's going to be interesting. Um, Rio just got bought out. I don't know if you guys know from Caesars to Dreamscape. They're trying to reinvigorate that property because it is kind of like the apocalypse in there. It's kind of sad. Um, yeah. Caesars neglected it for a really long time. And so now they're trying to bring the local gambler in. And so they said for, at, let's say you spend $1,000 with most of the, the casinos, you're going to get about $10 back. Rio wants to give you for every thousand dollars, they're going to give you eighty dollars back. I think it was eighty, right? And when you say a thousand dollars, you mean that goes through the machine or or in your credit, losing like, or ten? Am I thinking ten thousand? Ten thousand dollars they give you ten dollars, something like that. Maybe. And then for every ten thousand dollars at Rio, they're going to give you eighty. And that's money in right? credits that you could spend at the restaurants and things like that, or, right. or slot. Or I think it's slot just machine. slot, and it might be oh. ten thousand. And, and, and when you say these slot. numbers, does that mean that goes through the slot machine, or you lose that much? No. Or? So here's the thing with that. It's so we went to Venetian, and we were we had our host or whatever, and they count your your coin in. Your coin in is not so. When you sat there with a hundred dollars yes. for thirty minutes, your coin in was probably like nearly a thousand dollars. Gotcha. Because every spin is money, even though you got paid at that time. So you spun three dollars, right? You won ten. I see. You spend that ten. That was not your ten dollars, but you spent ten dollars. Got it. Do you see? So yes. you're like, at one point, you were up to five hundred. You put all that back. You put three hundred more in. So your coin in was a lot. And if you have a a card in the machine, it's counting all of that as your money. Right. They think you're spending that money. And the only reason that they're doing these loyalty is it's data. They want to see what machines you're playing and they want to see where you're spending your money. And they reward you for giving them your data by giving you comps and stuff. And you can get treated really well, even as a local, because locals don't get treated as well as tourists. Yeah. Like when you move here, you lose a lot of your comps. Wow. Because when we didn't live here, we could stay anywhere for free because of how much we were spending in the hotels and the casinos and stuff. But it's you want the loyalty card. For anyone who's like just starting out, I recommend picking a place like one, like, oh, I like Venetian. I love the Venetian and just gamble there and work your way up in there. Because if you get all the way up at one, you can also try to tier match at other places because hmm. they see that you spend all your money in this place. And they're like, oh, look at they gamble so much there. So oh, you look. show them your card. Yeah, what You're do like, you do? hi, How do you, you can match? email or you can ask to see a host. So you can be like, hi, do you guys have a host? I'd like to meet a host. You guys have a host. No, not everywhere. 
Um, so every place is different. They all have different hosts. And what's, we don't, the, what's the purpose of this host? The host is the person that sees that you spend a lot of money gambling and they want you to stay there. And so they're going to give you food, beverage, they'll make reservations Invite for you. Invite you to events, things like that. Yeah, and yeah. they're going to they're gonna encourage you to stay brand loyal. So our friends have a host over at MGM. So they want you to be MGM loyal. But their host is specifically for New York, New York. So they need to play at New York, New York. Even though MGM as a whole is like its own. Uh, they can play other places too, but like they want to show that they're playing a lot in New York, New York, because right. that's where their host is, you know? Yes. Are you worried about any regulations on YouTube not allowing gambling one of these days? I try not to worry about stuff like that. There's always, if that happens, someone's going to pop up a platform for slots to show right. slots. I mean, that's going to happen then. But we also do slots on Facebook. Our Facebook slot play does great. I mean, it's like, it does really well. And we're also doing it on TikTok at Is this it point. a watch page or... Just a normal. It's our. Is it our Travel Ruby page? I think it's just our. Tra it's our Travel Ruby Facebook page, right. and we put, we like upload our YouTube videos there that they can go to YouTube. But then we also load the slot play there as its own videos on Facebook. So we get paid separately on Facebook for the slot play on both. So we're double dipping. Yes. So we're getting money from both of those. And you're doing YouTube Shorts as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes, on the slot channel. I don't do YouTube Shorts on Travel Ruby, mm -hmm. um, but I do them on the saw channel as well and that's just a way to push the channel out really because our goal right now is growth like we're seeing steady growth of the channel and we're just trying to like keep it steady and keep it growing um eventually get the plaque for that one as well because yeah. i want to have a plaque for both and when we talked to dan i noticed that most of his audience was like 45 plus so it's typically an older audience slots is an older audience which is tough because a lot of them don't even have a youtube account like they never made a YouTube account. They're not going to put their email in. They can watch without doing it. So they don't. Right. So that is the challenge with that versus travel. Ruby's a little different. I have a, a younger demographic there because it's people that are coming to Vegas sometimes for the first time. So we keep getting new, uh, new people coming to the channel all the time. It never stops. So even if my video is older, like an older review of a hotel, someone's seeing that for the first time because they're Googling it. Yeah, they're looking up where to stay and they're finding our channel. Yeah. So it's always new people coming in. And the slot channel is much more of a like steady group. Right. So do you think it's too late to get in on either travel content or slot play? Oh, I would say, as my husband would always say, if a niche is um, super saturated, that means that there is uh, opportunity in that niche. If it's super saturated. Correct. There's okay. a reason it's saturated. People are watching it. Right. You got to think with slot content too, those people are gamblers and gambling is very addictive and watching other people play is a way to get serotonin without spending your own money. And every play is different. Even if you and I are playing the same machine the same day, it's going to be a completely different video yeah. than the person before you. No, I, I was watching, I think it was Vegas Matt. And mm -hmm. oh my gosh, he's betting like he's five man. grand. A, like, he's a madman. It's insane. He's a really nice guy, actually. He's a mad man. His son, EJ, is the one running the channel. And I think he was like, Dad, if you're going to bet this much, like we may as well make a channel. I've never seen growth like that in a channel. It's like unprecedented. It's absolutely right. incredible. And you'd think it'd be the opposite because he's not gambling with relatable money. But I guess the the stakes are so high. But it's kind of, think about like the Super Bowl, like people are watching the best of the best play football right. versus watching like your friends play football. Both right. are entertaining for different reasons. Sure. But people want to watch someone spend $100,000 to spin. That's nuts. That's crazy. $1,000 to spin. What did they, they what it's crazy people yeah. want to watch that they get a thrill out of it i get it so you got different sides of the coin i think that different is that something you guys would ever try like just take let's say 100 grand of a budget and you're like let's see if this lasts a week or a month or whatever and then let's see where it goes possibly i think the channel would have to be a little bit bigger than it is sure. now but sure i mean we talked about what were we talking about when we hit a hundred thousand what were we going to do like a thousand dollar spins or something crazy we said we were going to do something nuts when we hit a hundred thousand or a hundred thousand like a payout oh a subscriber like we would bet like a thousand dollars a spin for however many spins or something right. just just to yeah, celebrate a hundred thousand yeah i mean the most we typically if we're doing high limit we've done $25, $50 spins. I think 50 is the most we've done ever usually. That's a lot. I mean, that's, you have to have. Yeah, that would give you yes, a lot of that's a ton. That's a ton, so. And how does the income of the slot channel compare to the Travel Ruby one? So it's hard to compare them. The CPM is lower on slots, um, but we upload every single day. So the views are nearly equivalent. 
because right like they're pretty close in terms of viewers on per month like we're getting almost the same amount of views per month on the much smaller slot channel to travel ruby because we're only uploading on travel ruby once a week right but we have a way bigger fan base over there and but you're uploading once a day for the slots correct and are you placing the ads yourself yes you are how Absolutely. many times throughout the video four 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 what do you play Sorry. like after a big win or something or before oh no like, um or you just that we kind of at certain point like time markers i think we know. do yeah. like at, a, at five or this or this or mm. this is when we play some usually we have like a set thing that we do i don't i again that's ken's job that's, interesting. <laughs> that's not barbie's job sure if you can't tell i don't do a whole lot of the uh, <laughs> actual like physical internet-y part um yeah. i owe a lot of that to my husband luckily and it's what do you guys do together right yeah. now like how are you guys investing the money are you just saving it saving everything we live like as I said I don't know if I said we live way below our means I we barely spend any of our money because we're just stacking I I a lot of people that like our age I know are doing like a starter house or they found one and it was a good deal and they bought it and they maybe it won't live there forever and I don't want anything to do with that I want our home and we buy it and we're there for like 40 years and then we retire like that is what I want I want a big house I want a pool so we're just like stacking as much as we can like we're just collecting as much money as possible so that like we could buy a house right now cash if we wanted but we want like the, the whole nine so we're just kind of holding out for that you know that's yeah. that's the goal so it's just save 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 yeah well congrats on you guys success right. yeah. thank Very you good. guys Appreciate thanks it. Yeah. Yeah. thank you for coming by anything yeah. else you guys want to add i would say if you've never been to vegas before one thing i would say is that there's truly is something for everyone i think it's not just one thing so it's like it, even if you don't like gambling or drinking or there's so many other things about the city there's so many cool parts of the city it's not just the strip it's not just downtown so give it a shot if you've never traveled here and then if you're a gambler i would say never ever gamble angry and set your budget for the day and decide not what we do do as I say, not as I do. So set a budget and stick to it. Decide how much you're willing to lose and also how much you're willing to win. So like you were up to 500 and then you ended up losing it down, right? Yes. Some people get really upset when they do that to themselves. So you have to set, okay, if I hit $700, I'm taking that. Um, we've also cashed out that much and then put like a, a new hundred in. And that's another thing you can do because then it's like you kept your win and you put a new hundred in. That's a good way of that's looking a, at that's it. Yeah. Fake. That's different money now. You're, that's good advice. Yeah. Girl math. You're on different money at that right. point. But you won't lose as much because there's nothing worse than losing your whole wins. So keep track of that too. How much am I willing to lose? But also if I win this much, am I going to take it and walk, learn to walk? Because there's other things you can do besides gamble. That's great advice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, thank thanks you. For you can find me, Travel guys. Ruby, yeah. Travel Ruby, or the Gambling Channel. Travel Ruby and Ruby Slots. Ruby Slots. So give me a follow. Thank you guys. Yeah. Bye. Lab one arm bandit. <laughs> no, I'm I'm like swole, so I'm good. Yeah. That's the same when we do.